and it's a pretty good start by Simon Wing from the front of the grid. Although having said that, he's got cars either side of him. He's got a Honda to the left. He's got a Honda to the right. It's certainly Chalky White in the Honda Civic that looks like he's going to go into the lead of the race unless uh, Simon Wing in that Peugeot 205 can hang on all the way around the outside there. It looks like they are still more or less side by side and it looks like it's Chalky White that's got the lead as they come down to the uh, Wilson hairpin for the first time. It's the Nissan alongside the Honda for third and fourth position and you've got uh, a lot of jostling for position a bit further back as well. Heading that little group you can see is that number 12 synthetically fueled BMW that we we're talking about possibly about to lose a place to Mike Nash but there's the battle for third. I think the Paul Cook situation is all planned because Chris Slater is down there with a stopwatch and now they release Paul Cook I think to make a race out of it for him so it's almost a bit like the a handicap race for um, for Paul Cook, who's not part uh, generally of the Armed Forces Race and Chapters, and there's a secondary car that started on the pit lane, that's the Ginetta G20 of Cy Frohan, who's obviously had a few issues. But so everyone now into the race, those battles up front, there's David Russell, he's involved in the dice with Mike Nash, and he's BMW 330, Blair Thompson, Honda Civic, Keith Atwood's Mini Cooper, and he dives up the inside there into the Oggies, right hander and makes a move up a position ahead of Blair Thompson, so a position gained there. Uh, and lost immediately. <laughs> oh, <right>. and, uh, <laughs> Jonathan Candler's Perger, another different type of car involved in this battle that hence its way out onto the uh, Bentley straight for the first time. And at the front of the field, it is Mark White then. Shorty White did get himself up ahead of Simon Wing. Uh, problems further down the order. Yeah, that's Harry Townsend from Cambridge, local driver. In his 116, looks like he's had a moment and gone off onto the grass there. That's coming out of Hamilton, I think, isn't it? Uh, that that has happened. There's the leader, though, through the uh, bomb hole then for the first time. He's got si uh, Simon Wing uh, pursuing him in second place in that Peugeot 205. Quite a gap back then to uh, Alexander Smith in third place in the Honda Integra. He's shaken off for the moment, at least, the Nissan uh, of... Uh, Alex Rivette, who is in fourth place. And then in fifth, it's David Russell. And there is uh, Harry Townsend. Looks like he's pulling off the circuit completely now, Josh. And a challenge for the lead going up across the line because Simon Wings, Class A. Perger has a little bit more power. But uh, by the end of the straight, perhaps not enough. So at the end of lap one, it is Mark White that leads with Simon Wing in second and third, Alex Smith, like you say. But then it's Alex Rivette, the best of the rest, with Dave uh, Russell hanging on to P5. The rest of the field come through uh, within the top ten. Blair Thompson, Mike Nash, Jonathan Candler, Keith Atwood and Jasmine Norman. Absolutely right. As we watch the cars heading into Wilson Hairpin for the second time, there is Jasmine in her Audi TT just ahead of a Ginetta, an MR2, a Mick Mix 5s in there as well. What a great variety we have. There's the Paul Martin Jones holding Commodore. That's 19th at the end of that one and there is number 23 Blair Thompson who leads the championship coming into this weekend with his results based on performance index and uh, he's in sixth on circuit at the moment he is fourth within class B uh, right now as well Paul, Paul Cook by the way in court the back of the pack he's 40 seconds uh, delayed start his chase sort of starts now he's caught the back of the pack at the end of lap one some uh, battling a bit further down the order here involving the Mazda MX-5 of Luke Aprino, the uh, similar car of Dougie Inglis who uh, you mentioned earlier usually the front runner in Class D but Peter Deal not ahead um, today in his Janetta also involved in this battle is Scott Townsend in his um, Ford a few problems though further back which Paul Cook is squeezing past yeah it's just got past Andrew Holmes in the MGB Alex Waldeck in the Peugeot is also uh, fairly easy work for Paul Cook to get by. So we'll see how many positions he's made up at the end of lap two. But there's the battle for fifth and sixth. It's Mike Nash, sorry, for, uh, for sixth and seventh that will be. Mike Nash having got ahead of Blair Thompson here. And a problem there for number 79. And that is the car of Keith Atwood, is it not? He's outbraked himself, I think, at uh, Brundle. And I think, is he going to try and resume the race there? He's looking for a gap in the traffic. Perhaps uh, he would have been advised to use the escape route and uh, gone straight through, but that's why uh, perhaps some people do track walks. Maybe he hasn't ahead of this weekend. 
and he's trying to rejoin, probably not in the most uh, uh, friendly way, but hopefully he'll be uh, problem free and he'll be able to carry on while battles carry on up across the line. But for Simon Wing, the driver was in second place and has pulled the Peugeot 205 GTI off the road. Yeah, it looks like he has uh, pulled out of the race. He's not got through as far as the end of lap two, I don't think. I, I'd suggest that's on the exit of the Wilson hairpin. OK, well, Keith, that was, that was finally found the escape <laughs> road, which he suggested in the first place, Josh. He must have been listening in. But it's now Mark White leading by 5.3 seconds then as a result of that. So 65, Mark White from 84, Alex Smith. Uh, Alex Rivet now is up to third in number three. Fourth is number 12, Dave Russell in the BMW. Fifth is 23, Blair Thompson. And sixth is 48, Mike Nash. As we're watching uh, some of the 116s and indeed that day next year uh, have a scrap a little bit further down the order of, uh, of Ian Cooper. Have we spotted where Paul Cook has got up to at the end of uh, lap two, though? 18, so we over to wow. about 20 cars <laughs> just on that last lap. Uh, he's done a two minutes, 10.7. So that's over three seconds quick from the leader. And he's 38 seconds behind at this stage, behind the leader. A battle there, Jasmine Norman. She's up to eighth. She's up to eighth now. So this uh, progress from her in her first race and 14th on the grid continues. But she has got a chase uh, with Peter Dillnock closing in. He started further back as well, did he not? Uh, well, just ahead of her, 13th yeah. on the grid. So they've both made good progress, which would suggest... Obviously, we've lost up, or Paul Cook's dropped back uh, from his pit lane start, and Simon Wing has retired, but maybe others as well who start a bit further up have had problems and dropped down the order a little. Keith Atwood's just retired into the pit lane. There's now rain uh, possibly as well for the drivers to contend with. We've heard it spotting up towards the Wilson hairpin, uh, but it's a big old campus, this at uh, Snetton, so it might be raining at one end of the track and, and not the other. Certainly nothing on our commentary box window at the moment. This is the man in third place. It's Alex Rivet. He's also third in Class B in the uh, Nissan. And out of the race, there goes the Toyota MR2 of which one is that that has uh, retired is that the richard brown car 35, 35. Possibly. Uh, yeah richard brown mr2 roadster i think black and white driving standards flag for somebody there that's likely to be for exceeding track limits at some point of this layout so three laps now completed by the race leader mark white number 65 has extended his lead to 6.6 .6 seconds over the rest of the field uh, Smith in second, Alex Rivet in third, and David Russell in fourth position. We'll see how many more places Paul Cook has made up, because he's just about to come across the line now. He's ahead of Luke Carpino now, so by that reckoning, he's up into 11th place. So another, another seven places Josh made up on that lap. Yeah, and uh, he's passed Gavin Aldworth, one of his uh, former Toyota MR2 mates, by the time he gets to Richie's. So that's the top 10 now for Paul Cook. He is 32 seconds behind the leader because on that lap he was six seconds quicker than Mark White. Now, if we go the full 20 minutes, a win is potentially still on the cards here for Paul Cook, who now dives up the inside of Peter Dillnock's Janetta. So make that ninth position uh, for Paul Cook, and it'll probably be eighth by the time he gets to the next corner. Yep, so he's chasing after that number 27, Jasmine Norman. Uh, Audi TT, the drive from Melksham, so not too far away from, from Castle Coombe. That would be her uh, local circuit there. And you can see the novice cross on the back of her car. But Paul Cook easily able to pass that to Mark 1 Audi TT and move up into 8th place. Yes, yeah, so a 1999 car. I sort of don't think the Audi TT was built that long ago, but there you go. Uh, with the 1.8 litre turbocharged engine. Into the pits has come through, uh, the Peugeot 306 of number 25, Alex Waldeck, out of the race as well. OK, so Paul Cook, eighth now. He's chasing Jonathan Candler, who's up next. It's still Mark White that leads, by the way, in his Honda Civic in 65. From 84, Alexander Smith's uh, Honda Integra. And number three, Alex Trevet going well in the Nissan 350Z. He's had one podium this season, or on top three overall, uh, which was at Croft last time out. Paul Cook up the curves, coming out of the uh, Nelson corner there, out of the S's. And he's pushing on in this E46 M3, which he'll also be racing this weekend in the BMW Car Club Racing Championship, which comes up tomorrow. He leads Class A at the moment, after the, the demise of Simon Wing as well. Mark White, the overall leader, heads Class B. It's uh, David Russell leading Class C, and Class D being led by Peter Dillnott, as we're about to get a challenge out of our Comptrobots window for third place up at Riches. 
uh, with uh, David Russell just about to challenge Alex Rivetta. Don't think he could quite make the place work there, but we're watching Paul Cook here. He is closing down now on the 23 car of Blair Thompson, the Honda, and the 48 BMW of Mike Nash. So last year, David Russell on fossil fuels did a 2 minute 17.23 on synthetic fuels this year. He's on a 2 minute 16.72 and therefore sets a new lap record in Class C. Uh, but not too much to choose between them, interestingly enough. Uh, hearing that the very similar, up, right up until you got, get to the sort of top end of the, the power range in how they perform. So we're watching, watching the cars head through the left-hander at par, but as we do now have some spots of rain on our contract, you know, not very many, it has to be said, it's not a downpour by any stretch of the imagination, so I don't think it's going to be making too much difference for the drivers at this stage. Paul Cook in has done a 2.6.47, which is three seconds quicker than qualifying, and it's a new lap record in the Armed Forces Racing Challenge, which he set previously in a 2 minutes 7.6, so it's gone over a second quicker than that. He has indeed, and he's going to make short work, I think, of these uh, the, the next two, which will be uh, David Russell and Alex Rivette. We're still watching here the battle for fifth and well, what is now sixth and seventh, isn't it, between Mike Nash and uh, and Blair Thompson. Mike Nash, number 48, in the patron liveried uh, BMW there. And he's now making his way onto the Bentley Straight. There is Paul Cook reeling in those cars that is disputing third and fourth positions at the moment. He is current, that was at the start of the lap, just 24 seconds behind the lead. It's probably going to be about 17 seconds or something, I would think, by the end of the lap. But he will be behind the race leader with, we think, uh, around about uh, 11 minutes of the race to go. You mentioned the, the day you were earlier. That's up to 28. So Ian Cooper has been gaining positions and he's gone five seconds quicker than he did in qualifying this morning. Learning all the time in that uh, underpowered uh, little car. Of course, it was similar to the shape of the Mark II Astra, those uh, day next years were based on. Paul Cook, outside our common box window, is now up to third place. He's just uh, gone past both the Nissan and the BMW. And so, so he's 14 seconds behind the leader, and on the last lap was nine seconds quicker, because well, uh, Mark White's lap time was a little bit slower than it has been. So assuming we get two more laps, which we should do, Paul Cook should be able to win this. So... Uh, Perhaps he needs a bigger penalty than he got for this race. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. See what happens for race two later on in the day. There's Blair Thompson still, championship leader, as we said, from Mark White and Paul Wardhouse coming into this race. The man that was fourth in the championship, Keith Atwood, we've seen as retired. I think also Richard Brown has had misfortune as well during the course of this race, but it's going pretty well, I think, for the others. Paul Wardhouse is 17th overall at the moment. He's well down the order in Class C, but as we've said, Within the Armed Forces Race Challenge, it is consistency that is rewarded with points, not your overall pace. So it's important to have a good, clean race. Yeah, Blair Thompson at Croft did finish second and third overall there. Not so far up the overall order here at Snatterton. But like you said, that doesn't particularly matter. He has uh, been involved in this battle with Mike Nash, though, in his BMW 330. They head out of... Oggies down towards Williams, the, th well, the corner that takes you on to the Bentley Straight, the, uh, the back straight, so a very important corner that to keep your speed up for the long run um, up towards the Brundle Nelson S's. And that is where they uh, will arrive now with the BMW going underneath the BMW sponsored bridge for Mike Nash, who's there in what is sixth position. And still ahead, therefore, of Blair Thompson. And if anything, he's got a slightly larger margin than he had a few moments ago. Yep, so Nash making his way through the bomb hole out towards uh, Quorum and towards the end of this long three mile lap here at Snetterton. And as Paul Cook goes across the line again, what's his gap to the lead now? It's less than seven seconds now. He's up to second place behind Alex Smith. So I would think at some point on this lap we will get a change of lead. So we'll try and keep a look out for that as uh, we could see that Russell battle going through once again with Blair Thompson and Mike Nash involved. There is Paul Cook on screen now, Josh. Yeah, so by the end of the lap, he, you'd think he would be up with... Mark White, so I'm sure Paul Cook would have enjoyed this. Uh, I, I'm sure that he would have been cons 
contemplated about uh, what was going to happen. Perhaps he, he suggested it even, mm. and like you say, he's pushing on. The sponsor's name on the, the side of the uh, car sums up this drive very well. Quick charge, well he's had a quick charge through the field here. He's lapped now the uh, MGB of Andrew Holmes, which is in 31st position and also one of the 116s. So uh, yeah, it's a bit of good, good drive this from Paul Cook, good fun I should think as well. I think that was uh, Melissa Bexley, she just passed the 30 year old mechanic. Uh, who was just ahead of um, up ahead of Andrew Holmes? Good to see the MG running. Cause they had a few issues at Croft last month, so we get a, a good uh, view on our next camera angle. How much of a gap is between oh dear, Mark White and Paul Cook? We won't because that camera sees Cy Frohan's race not get any better in the Ginetta G20 that was formerly raced by Peter S Matt Smith with the 750 Motor Club a number of seasons ago. The Ginetta's off now at uh, Bombhole, which is a real shame. Looks like he's getting back out of the race. A couple of Ginettas on the grid, though, uh, this weekend, which is not far as off how many there were at Cadwell Park last weekend <laughs> for the Ginetta G-Fest, but uh, never mind that. As we watch now uh, the 28 car, the which is the Melissa Bexley car, and Andrew Holmes battle. The two leaders are nose to tail as they go into Coram. Here they are around the outside. Is that the Daewoo? That's the Daewoo, yeah. Oh, I've seen it now <laughs> properly. Uh, but but uh, White still uh, ahead of Cook, but he won't be, I don't think, by the time they get to the line. No, on the power Paul Cook will get. Uh, he is alongside, and he is about to go past. Possibly slightly stopped by some back markers ahead, but so he had to be mindful of those, but he has got through now. So with uh, four minutes or so on the clock, Paul Cook, from, Paul Cook from the pit lane takes the lead of the race. He just puts a lap on the David Royce George Mini Cooper S there, number 42. So uh, as uh, Cy Frohan, who had that spin a moment ago in the Ginetta, now down the pit lane. I think that Mini, I may have seen uh, at the Isle of Wight at the beginning of the season doing the, okay. the sprint on the... Um, <laughs> On the seafront, I have to check that so back in my notes, and it looks uh, familiar. Uh, anyway, Paul Cook leads in what should be the penultimate lap, shouldn't it? Uh, assuming we go the full 20 minute distance. Uh, there's the Mini, uh, which will uh, have already been lapped, I should think, yes. by, by Mark White. But this is, I think, a novice cross on the back we've seen for David Wallace Jones, and he's got a BMW behind him, uh, which he's just got past, which I think. Oh no, he's just ahead of Nick Hill, one of the shared cars, isn't it? Because Nick Hill sharing that car with Matthew Davison over the course of the weekend. There's the Dayu for Dayu lovers, and I'm <laughs> sure there's many of them tuned in. That was a good long look at it. There it is, the 51 car of uh, Ian Cooper. So you can see, yes, it is reminiscent of the uh, Astra Mark and II body shape. And this one does run a Vauxhall engine as well. Yeah. So. Uh, Novice cross on the back for Ian Cooper. We mentioned earlier from track days to circuit racing. He's done track days for 18 years. Obviously, he thought that's uh, enough of uh, just doing track days, but uh, going racing as well now. And there's Alexander Smith, who is now a long way ahead of Alex Rivet. Yes, who's still there in the background, isn't he? You can see, but he was 10 seconds or so behind, behind Smith who's still involved in the battle with David Russell. That's been a race-long battle for what is now fourth position overall. But there's Alexander Smith then in the Honda Integra. He's had a second position as his best uh, result this season, which was in the second race at Croft. Yeah, I think it was a non-finisher in the first race there, wasn't he, from, from memory? Uh, so the chequered flag has gone out now, so it's gone out a little bit earlier. So Paul Cook has taken the win from in second place. Oh, and a late spin there for Alex Smith. Now, has he... Managed to get it sorted out in time to still hold on to third place. I think he probably has. So uh, Alex Smith is going to go across the line now to take third place. There he goes. So no, not too much harm done for him. Fourth and fifth has been fairly close race long. And it still is at the end. Uh, with the day between them, there's a bollard that someone has, uh, has knocked out of uh, position there. Alex Smith, I'd suggest. Cause Possibly. I think, you know, I'd imagine he lost it on the exit of Coram uh, before he got into Murray's. More cars up across the line, including Jonathan Candler, who finished just behind uh, Mike Nash and Blair Thompson, who are in sixth and seventh positions. Ninth position is going to go the way of Jasmine Norman. Then Peter Dillnock will win in Class D. And therefore beats uh, Dougie Inglis over the course of the race uh, by a decent margin. Between them will be Paul Chapman, who's in another of the shared cars today. He shares that Renault Clio with Ben Moore. And uh, 
Luke Arpino will complete the first dozen in this eight lap race for the Armed Forces Racing Challenge. We will see these again later on this afternoon for another 20 minute race. Um, but we've got a busy programme over the course of today because there's eight categories to look forward to. Here at Snetterton today we're using the, uh, the cut through the park firm. Eh? So you can see now uh, the marshal at Palmer will guide the drivers into Park Fermé and uh, towards Matt Suckling. So probably the, c the car, the leaders will be with Matt before everybody else takes the chequered flag. But let's take a look at the results as they are. Yeah, indeed. So Paul Cook it was on the back of the grid, won the race in number 126 BMW. Eight laps completed for him. Second was number 65, Mark White. He was 6.13 seconds behind. Third was number 84, Alex Smith, despite that spin at the final corner, 22 seconds behind the leader. Fourth, number three, Alex Rivette, uh, 29 seconds behind the lead. Then fifth was a class winner, David Russell, number 12, winning class C. Mark White won class B, by the way. Uh, sixth, number 48, Mike Nash. Seventh was 23, Blair Thompson. Eighth was eight for one, Jonathan Candler. Ninth was 27, Jasmine Norman. Very promising debut for her. And tenth, number seven, Peter Dillner, our class D winner, ahead of Paul Chapman, Luke Arpino, Dougie Inglis, and Scott Townsend. And a lot of cars to get through here. You can see Gavin Oldworth, 15th. Paul Martin Jones in the hold was 16th head of Paul Waterhouse, who's always uh, going as well. James Flint, Trevor Hancock, and Gareth Moss round out the top 20. And we'll let this scroll through because there's another screen still of uh, finishers to get through. And some non finish as well, including Cy Crow and Richard Brown, Keith Atwood, and uh, Simon Wink, sadly, in the Peugeot 205 that started on the front row of the grid.